In this video, we're gonna compare the assets of the wealthy and ultra wealthy to the average American. So what is it that the ultra wealthy are owning that the average American doesn't have? The biggest takeaway to me is that the wealthy love private businesses and stocks, while the average American owns far more in real estate and kind of consumer durable goods such as vehicles. My name is Scott Caulfield. I am a CPA and a CFA charter holder and the founder of Sophos Wealth Management. So this data comes from the Survey of Consumer Finances um, that's done by the Federal Reserve. It's kind of the gold standard on this information. Uh, the most recent data was released late 2023, and it's based on 2022 data that the Fed has released. So what we'll see here is a chart, and it kind of breaks down the gross assets. So this isn't going to include any offsetting debt, but it's the gross assets by different net worth percentiles. Um, so the first, you know, real obvious takeaway, if you look at this chart, is that real estate is a huge component of the bottom 50% of net worth in America. In fact, the real estate component is over 51% of the bottom 50%. The wealthier you get, the lower real estate becomes as a percentage of your gross assets. So between the 50 to 90th percentile, we're around 40%. The top 10%, it gets close to 25%. And then all the way in the tippy top 0.01 percentile, you're talking about 9.1% of net worth. And some of this just kind of makes sense as just kind of basic math. I mean, if you take somebody who lives in a $500,000 house, they've got, let's say a $400,000 mortgage and maybe a $100,000 retirement account, well, that person has 100,000 of retirement assets and a $500,000 asset of a house. So in that case, you know, five sixths of their assets are gonna be real estate versus somebody with an ultra high net worth. I mean, if they live in a $2 million house, but they own a multi-million dollar business, they're likely to have a few million in stocks. You can see how the, the percentages are gonna kind of change there. Next category is consumer durables. So these are things like vehicles is gonna be one of the biggest components here. Again, not surprising, you're gonna see in the average American and especially the lower wealth, consumer durables are gonna be a much higher percentage of their gross assets. In fact, it's the second largest component, 19.4% uh, for the bottom 50%. And essentially, once again, the higher your net worth, the lower this is as a percentage. So you're gonna hit 6.4 for that 50 to 90th percent, all the way to the lowest is 1.6% for the top 1%. So quite low there. Interestingly, at least to me, the top 0.1%, it actually goes up again to 2.9. And I think this is kind of the Lamborghini yacht effect, um, the rich like their toys, the ultra rich. So it's not that surprising to see it eke up a little bit, um, but it's not a huge percentage. So the next big difference is in terms of stocks. So that's gonna be your corporate equities and mutual funds on this chart. Uh, for the bottom 50%, it's not a significant component of their assets, only 4%. As you get into the top 10%, though, you're talking about 37.4%, so big, big percentage. Uh, private businesses is another one we see, too. Um, not a significant component of the lower wealth percentiles. So for private businesses, you're looking at only 1.7% of the bottom 50%. Uh, and again, even the 50th through 90th percent, private businesses is not a significant component of assets, 4.5%. But as you get into the top 10%, you're looking at 9.5 and all the way to the top 0.1, private businesses are nearly a quarter of their, their wealth or their growth assets. So gets more and more significance. And when you add up stocks and private businesses, I mean, you can see what a big component that is of the wealthiest Americans and how insignificant it is for the lowest income Americans. So and I think that's a huge takeaway when I look at this data. Now we have a second chart here. It's gonna give you, um, this is actually from a tw the 2019 data. It's the same survey, just a little bit earlier data, and they've kind of sliced and diced it a little bit differently. It's essentially backing up all the same takeaways. You can see those consumer durable goods. Um, in this case, it's labeled a little different, but you're, you're a much bigger component of lower wealth percentiles than it is in the upper wealth, these other non-financial assets. Uh, real estate, again, a huge component that shrinks and shrinks and shrinks the higher up um, in the wealth percentiles we go. 
stocks and private businesses become bigger and bigger, the wealthier you are. And the other interesting takeaway on this one to me is um, kind of these um, interest bearing accounts. So like think savings accounts really doesn't change, which I think is just kind of fascinating, uh, but not a super surprising takeaway. So I hope this information was useful to you. I mean, um, sometimes I don't know if this is really cause or effect. I mean, certainly uh, we know that stocks and private businesses are a fantastic way to build wealth. So it's not surprising that people who have owned a lot of that happen to have high percentage of that as their assets. Um, that being said, some of this is also just mathematical. I mean, so it's not surprising to see real estate be a big component of lower wealth percentiles. That doesn't mean real estate is necessarily a bad way to build wealth, though. I've seen a lot of people go that route. You know, consumer durable goods, things like vehicles. Yeah, this is a depreciating asset. Not surprising. Um, trying to build wealth, you'd want to minimize that as a percentage of your assets. But, you know, I hope you enjoyed this information. Uh, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and uh, visit the Sophos Wealth Management website to get more information. Thanks a lot.